Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. I hurt my neck at the gym today. Uh, about two or three times a year, I totally like pinch a nerve in my neck or something when doing overhead press, so I can barely turn my head at all. I'm like a bird. I have to like rotate my entire body to... Uh... Anyway, um, moving on. So I'm going to start combining the postmortems with the uh, weekly picks videos just because I, I feel like the postmortem videos... Not only do I feel like I don't know if there's just enough content there to justify it, its own video, but also I just don't know if I have as much time anymore. Uh, things are getting a lot more busy work-wise, and, um, you know, this is how I feel like this is the best. How's everybody doing? Glad to see people are here. I really am. Um, the audience is why I do this. I, I like sharing all this. But anyway, Alabama moved ahead of Georgia in the power rankings, and Michigan is up to number three. Um, so that was the development from last week. So... Uh, after a promising week four, week five wasn't great. Just a lot of red, red across the board. Not one keyless winner. Um, and so season to date, the best model is still support vector machine followed by least squares. And as, as I've been saying all year, those were the two ones that did best in back testing, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> as far as my own picks went last week, not good. 0-2 oh against the spread, 3-4 and four on totals, and 5-11 and 11 on money lines. Just couldn't hit on enough dogs. Uh, so wiped out all the gains I made in week four and then some. So I am now down 37.15 units on the year. So um, if I'm going to keep my streak of profitable seasons uh, increase that to five, I'm going to have to go on an absolute tear. Absolute tear to uh, keep that streak alive. And I, the odds aren't in my favor. Key matrix, there's just nothing there with keys, but I am keying off the K nearest neighbors uh, this week. Total's a lot better. I'm keying off a least square support vector neural network this week, so the second line and money line. Same as last week, nothing changed. Neural network and combo are the keys, although didn't do very good last week. So hopefully uh, this week we can get some more underdog hits because we didn't get enough of those last week. So that's just a quick postmortem. Let's get into this week's picks. I have to be out by 7.45, so... I might not spend as much time on some of the individual lesser matchups. Oh, crap. I also forgot to, uh, I forgot to, cre usually I create like a hierarchy of matchups for the week. Um, and I go like in order um, from best matchup to worst matchup, but I forgot to do that this week. So I'm going to have to uh, find another way to uh, do that. I do know like the best matchups this week. I know what those are, but as far as like, I guess I'll have to just go in order. Um, as far as like when the game's being played. I just don't have time to make the hierarchy. So I'm going to start with Houston and Tulane because that's a Thursday night game. That's why I'm starting there. Houston, after their big win over Tulsa, they blew them out, and Tulane's just been tail spinning. You have to imagine Tulane being displaced would catch up to them eventually. But this is number 41 versus 82. Houston's a six-point road favorite in New Orleans on Thursday night. Uh, five of six, including K nearest neighbors, which is the key this week. Go to Houston on the spread. Money line is split, and this is unanimous overplay over 59.5. K nearest neighbors, 60% Houston win percentage by an average margin of 5.3. And this right here. That is not the total, by the way, over here. Dang it, I had this all worked out last week. Stupid, uh, I can fix this very quickly, though. Hang on, let me, let me get this fixed. I don't want that, I don't want that total to be wrong. Uh, how did I do this? How did I do this? K and then total, K and then total. Okay, there we go. It's, a uh, column number nine. I don't know, something must not have saved, but... Now let me try. Better. All right. Average total is 67.6 on the K nearest neighbors. Yeah, everybody's having a rough go of it. Like FEI, which is a model I respect, is also doing very badly this year. S&P is not doing very good. All the models this year are not doing good, guys. I'm not alone. Um, like I said, making preseason estimates this year was impossible. 
And that's um, hurting a lot of people. All right, moving on to the other Thursday night game. You know, this could be a trap game for Coastal Carolina against Arkansas State, although Arkansas State's down to all the way to number 126 in the model, so I guess not. I didn't realize they had fallen that far. I didn't realize they were a bottom five team, but they are. Um, anyway, Coastal is a 20-point favorite. The total is 73. Unanimous Coastal spread. Unanimous Coastal money line. If you want to lay the minus 1111, and we are split on over and under. So, uh, but not one single K nearest neighbors picked Arkansas State. Average margin is 27 over here in a total of 73.6. So those are tomorrow night's games. Moving on to the Friday games. All right, starting with the worst one of the bunch. Conference USA matchup between UNC Charlotte and Florida International. Charlotte's a three and a half point road favorite. We got a 59.5 total. This is a unanimous Florida International uh, spread play. And on money line as well. Um, number 111 versus 113. I think the wrong team is favored here. Uh, five of six are going over the 59.5. Uh, nearest neighbors, Florida International, 70% win percentage and a 6.9 and margin. The average total is 60.7. So not too much over, but still it isn't over. All right, moving on to the next Thursday night game. This should be a blowout and not very fun to watch, so I pity the fool who watches it, but we got Temple and Cincinnati. Cincinnati coming off their big win against Notre Dame. Although the question remains, how big will that win continue to be? Um, they need Notre Dame to probably win 10 games. But anyway, I think Cincinnati's a playoff team if they can win out and there's not enough undefeated teams left. I do agree with that. They won't get in over Alabama or Georgia, but I could see them giving over in one-loss teams elsewhere. But anyway, I don't think Cincinnati is that good. I think ranked seven is probably accurate. I still think their offense would struggle against like an elite defense. Uh, but anyway, Cincinnati is favored by 29. That doesn't matter. Unanimous Cincinnati spread, and we are split on totals. Uh, it should be 100% in favor of, I forgot, I need to select the road team on the slicer. But it's 100% in favor of Cincinnati by an average margin of 36.8, and the total is 54.9, so not a lot of edge there. All right, moving on to a more interesting Pac-12 matchup after big wins for both of these teams last week. But we got Stanford and Arizona State. Arizona State, my models like them all year, and I think it's that's starting to pan out. I mean, they've been in the top 10 of my model all year, but they're on their number six. Big win against... Uh, um, UCLA last week, Stanford big win against Oregon. So Stanford has really recovered after that season opening loss to Kansas State. Uh, Arizona State favored by 13.5. The total is 51. Five of the six do like Arizona State over here. If you want to lay the minus 500, it's probably a good value play on Arizona State. And we're split on over and under three and three. Stanford up to 53. I remember they were in the 80s or 90s at one point. So they've saved their season, but about a 10% chance. Average margin of 14.2, so pretty sharp. 57.3, so if you like an overplay, K nearest neighbor says over. Is there an error in my DPPA category? Defensive points padded per play. It depends on my website or here on the slicer. All right, moving on to Saturday matchups. All right, I'll save the big ones for last and just go in order as I see them. How's that sound? Starting with the 11 o'clock games, we got a boring SEC East matchup between South Carolina and Tennessee. Number 78 versus 38. Tennessee, big win against Missouri. Got to give them credit for that, which shot them up to 38 in my model. They were in the 60s before that. Spread is 10 and a half of the total is 57. Five of the six like Tennessee on the spread. If you like the neural network model, which is the key this week on money lines, South Carolina is your guy. And five of six like the under, including the three keys, least squares, neural network, and support vector. 10% uh, win chance for South Carolina over here. Uh, average margin is 16.1 and a total of 57.6. Season-wide results are on the website. Yeah. My model is getting slaughtered. I am not, uh, not going to disagree with you there. All right, moving on. Big 12 matchup. Two teams that featured losses last week. So if either of these teams have Big 12 title games aspirations, they probably got to win here. West Virginia and Baylor. Number 49 versus 44. I don't think Baylor's that good. They should have never been in the top 25. But they are a three-point favorite here. 
West Virginia with the inexcusable home loss to Texas Tech. Um, all six metrics do like Baylor on the spread. We are split on money line, but the neural network uh, likes West Virginia. And then unanimous over 44.5. Um, K-Nearest Neighbors is 50-50 in terms of wins, but um, slightly favors Baylor on the spread by 2.6, and 47.8 is your total. All right. I remember this matchup used to be a really good one in the MAC, and maybe it still is. We don't know who's good and who's not good in the MAC this year because they had such a bad non-conference uh, run. But number 59 versus 109. Toledo's a 12.5 point favorite. The total is 52. And uh, five of the six like Toledo on the spread. Uh, and we are split on over and under, but th the three keys do like over 52. K nearest neighbors, about a one in seven chance for Northern Illinois. Spread is 14.7 and the total is 49.7. So an under. <laughs> All right. If the home team in this matchup had not beaten Minnesota, maybe this would be like the worst game of the year in the MAC. But. Uh, I think that was Akron and Ohio the week before, but Bowling Green, you got to give them credit for beating Minnesota. They're still this is still a bottom ten matchup. Fourteen and a half point favorite for Bowling Green. The total is forty six. Split on spread, but K nearest neighbors does like Bowling Green. Split on money line, but this is the unanimous over forty six. About a one in five chance for Akron to win outright. Uh, average spread is seventeen point one, fifty one point one on the total. All right, Jekyll and Hyde team versus a team that just hasn't been any good this year. We got Georgia Tech and Duke. So Georgia Tech, a lot of momentum after the wins over North Carolina and the near win against Clemson, and then they just totally get destroyed against Pitt last week. In Duke, they've just been bad. Um, I know they beat Northwestern, but Northwestern's really bad. And um, this is number 67 versus 97. Georgia Tech's a three-and-a-half-point favorite, and the total is 60.5. Five of six like Georgia Tech against the spread. Split on money line, but the neural network, um, I think this is a play for Georgia Tech. Uh, does like Georgia Tech at minus 179, and five of six under, including the three keys of the week. Three and five chance for Georgia Tech to win, and a 4.7 spread. 60.1 is a total, so pretty sharp. All right. <laughs> this, this matchup I don't want to spend a lot of time on just because it doesn't seem very appealing, but we've got Old Dominion and Marshall. Old Dominion did show some fight against UTEP, but they're still a bad team. They're a 21-point dog here, number 70 versus 118. Split on the spread. Um, unanimous over 66, though. No team is favored on the K-nearest neighbors for Old Dominion. Average margin is 24.6, and 66.8 is the total. All right. One team whose season is completely bottomed out against another team who is, uh, you know, They've been better than I think people expected, and that's Virginia and Louisville. Virginia got to get that defense settled. Louisville, you know, they are what they are. Close game against Wake Forest, you know. But number 50 versus 52, UVA is a 2.5 road dog at Papa John's Stadium. It's not called that anymore, but I'm still going to call it that. Um, unanimous Louisville uh, uh, lean here on spread. Split on the money line. All the neural network does like Virginia. Unanimous under 69.5. About a 40% chance for Virginia on the K nearest neighbors. Average margins 5.2 and the total is 69.1, which is pretty close to the total of 69.5. All right, I remember this was a good matchup a few years ago. Maybe it will be this, this time. I think UAB is a class of Conference USA outside of UT San Antonio. But um, UAB is a four and a half point favorite. This is number 68 versus 80. So two of the better Conference USA teams here, but unanimous UAB lean over here. Split on money line and split on over and under, although the three keys all like under 48.5. One in five chance for Florida Atlantic to win, but the average margin is 13.4 and 49.9 on the total on the K nearest neighbors chart. Welcome back, Grub Warp. Okay. A non-conference matchup between Middle Tennessee and Liberty. Number 31 versus 110. Uh, Liberty, you know, still hanging around the top uh, 35. 19.5 favorite and total is 58. Um, split on spread. Um, five of six do like the under, but still split on the keys there. 
Only one metric picks Middle Tennessee on the K-Nears near Zagreb, and that was Hawaii over Air Force in 2016. Otherwise, the average margin is 23.1. Total is 56.9. So not a lot of value there. All right. One of the few teams to beat North Carolina a season ago was Florida State. But will they do it this time? I doubt it. Not playing at home this time. This year... Number 20 versus 81. North Carolina's a 17 and a half point favorite. Total 64.5. Unanimous UNC lean on the spread. And unanimous over 60.4.5. Only two K nearest neighbors algorithms pick Florida State here. One of which being Oregon State over Colorado three years ago. The other Kansas State over Oklahoma State four years ago. Minus 21.2 is the average margin. And 64.8 is the total. That is, this K nearest neighbors chart today is very close to the posted totals, I've noticed. All right, remember this matchup two years ago? I do. Illinois and Wisconsin. Wisconsin's uh, season was derailed. What the hell? Stupid autoplay ads. But anyway, number 18. So despite Wisconsin being one and three, they're still number 18 against number 93 because their defense is still number one. 10-point favorite, total is 42. Unanimous Wisconsin lean on the spread. If you want to lay the 385, money line is there, and split on total, 3-3. Three and three. 9 out of 10 chance Wisconsin will win by an average margin of 17.1. The k nearest neighbors total is only 38.7. That is very low. Although the top four matchups all went under. So Tennessee Vanderbilt being the most common in 2014. No, it's a TCU cup. All right. The worst matchup of the season, guys. And I'm not exaggerating. Worst matchup of the season. I don't see how a matchup could get worse than this. UMass and UConn. Number 127 versus 130. Oh, UConn's played bad the last two weeks. They almost beat Wyoming. They almost beat Vanderbilt. So got to give them credit. UConn's a three and a half point road favorite, and the total is 56. We are split on the spread, split on the money line, but we do like the over 56 here. 53.3% on the K nearest neighbors. Average margin is 2.3 in favor of UConn. The total is 61.6. So I would just bet the over and leave the rest alone. All right, moving back to the MAC, we got Miami of Ohio and Eastern Michigan. You know, I don't really know what to think of these two teams. I mean, Miami of Ohio is uh, two and three. They played Minnesota close. Eastern Michigan's been playing a lot better over the past few weeks, but number 85 versus 105. One and a half point favorite is Miami of Ohio. The total is 59, but this is a unanimous Eastern Michigan lean on the spread and money line at plus 105. Unanimous under 59 as well. Pretty even on the K nearest neighbors in terms of win percentage, 43.3 from Miami of Ohio. Average margin is 2.2, and the total is 48.9. So I do like the under in this one. Um, another MAC matchup. This is probably the MAC matchup of the year, but one of the teams has a not been good this year, and the other team has been good. We got Ball State and Western Michigan. Ball State down to 72 in my model, but they were a top 40 team at the beginning of the year. Western Michigan is in the top 30. Western's favored by 11. The total is 58. Um, split on the spread, uh, money line is also, um, if you want to lay the 435 on Western Michigan, be my guess, and then unanimous under 58. One out of 10 chance for Ball State to win, although the most common matchup was 2016 when Vanderbilt beat Western Kentucky. And average margins 14.5 in favor of Western Michigan. Average total is 47.5. Another one right in line with the actual total. Although the top four matchups have all gone over. All right, another MAC matchup between disappointing teams this year. Central Michigan and Ohio. I thought Central Michigan was going to be better than they have been this year, but Ohio has just been awful. Number 99 versus 114. Central is only a five-point spread. Total is 57. Appreciate it, Rashim. Uh, I guess, uh, Zodwick, I guess what goes into these models are a little bit more common than just where you stand on the ranking chart. Um, spread is split, money line is split, and unanimous under by a lot. I have it at 40, 40.4, so unanimous under. 
A uh, team similar in Central, 73.7%, uh, average margin 5.3 and 46.6 on the total. So I do like the under there, I really do. All right, moving on to the Mountain West. We got San Jose State and Colorado State. Um, somehow Colorado State is number 73 in this model, despite how bad they've been this year. I guess that close game against Iowa is propping them up. Against San Jose State, number 94. Colorado State's a two and a half point favorite. The total is 45. Unanimous uh, Colorado State lean on the spread and money line if we want to play the 132. And we're split on the total. Three and 10 chance for San Jose State to win. Average margin 6.4. And the total is 51.1. So it looks like an over lean there. All right. Moving on to one. I don't know what to think of these teams. Missouri with the embarrassing loss to Tennessee last week, and UNT has just been embarrassing in general this year. Number 116 versus 84. Missouri is all the way down to 84, but they're favored by 19 here in the total 69. But we got a unanimous North Texas lean here. I only have Missouri by about nine. Unanimous money line lean for uh, North Texas at plus 660. And uh, split on over and under, but the three keys do like the under here. About a one in six chance for North Texas to win, and the spread is seven and seven point nine and sixty four point nine is the total on the K nearest neighbors chart. All right, two teams coming off big wins last week, and one of them maybe in contention for the Pac twelve North, maybe. Whoops, we got Oregon State and Washington State. So Oregon State's up to number forty eight in my model. Washington State up to seventy five. Oregon State's a three-and-a-half point favorite in Pullman, and the total is 59.5. Four out of six do like Oregon State on the spread. Uh, five out of six like them on the money line, including the neural network at uh, minus 179. And then we're split on over and under, three and three. About 63.3% like Oregon State to win by an average margin of 4.3 and 58.7 is the total on the K-nearest neighbor's chart. That is another KNN total within one point of the actual total. All right, moving on to the American. East Carolina and UCF. UCF's been disappointing this year, especially with all the talk about how great of a higher Gus Malzahn was, but they've just not been very good. But they're a 10-point favorite here. They're number 58 against number 79. Total 67.5. We're split on spread. And we're split on money line, but this is the unanimous under 67.5. About a one in five chance for Eastern Carolina to win this one. The total, the spread by, but UCS favored by 10.8, and the total is 58.5 on the K nearest neighbors chart. All right, maybe the worst four and one team in the country going against one of the worst teams in the country, UTEP against Southern Miss. I don't know how Southern Miss is not a bottom 10 team. They're just awful this year. UTEP's favored by two on the row, and the total is 44.5. Unanimous Southern Miss lean on the spread and money line, and unanimous over. That's been the case with all the UTEP games this year. But unanimous over 44.5. About a one in three chance for UTEP to win, according to this, although the top two of the matchups do like UTEP. Average margin is 5.9, and the total is 57.2. So the top eight matchups all went over. All right, moving on to what could be a trap game for a team expected to go undefeated, UT San Antonio at Western Kentucky. UT San Antonio is actually a dog. They're 5-0 and undefeated going against a team that's 1-3, and and they're a dog. I don't think they should be. I have them at 74 versus 1-3, but Western's played a pretty tough schedule so far, so you can't really knock them. Unanimous UT San Antonio lean on the spread and money lines if you want to play them at plus 145, but unanimous under at 69.5 as well. 50-50 on K-Nearest Neighbors chart. Margins only 1.3 and 67.5 is your total. This is a tough game for UT San Antonio. Throw the records and everything out the window. It's tough. Western's played a tough schedule so far. All right, moving on to a matchup I can give you some expertise about. We've got TCU and Texas Tech. Number 61 versus 65, so pretty evenly matched. TCU has dropped precipitously over the last two weeks, but... Um, TCU's favored by one and a half points in Lubbock, total 61. However, unanimous Texas Tech lean on all six metrics, uh, split on the money line, and five of six like this going over 61. 
that TCU defense, man, just not 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 able to stop the run the last two weeks. About a 40% chance for TCU to win. Average spread is 4.1, and the total is 65.5 on the KNN. All right, back to the MAC. This was a would have been a better matchup um, in 2019. I remember Kent State rallying from 21 points down to win this one in 2019, but evenly matched, 95 versus 96, five and a half point favorite is Kent State. The total is 65. However, unanimous Buffalo lean on the spread and money line. And we got split on the over and under, but uh, the three metrics, the three keys do like under. 43.3% chance for Buffalo to win. Average margin is 3.4, and 69.4 is your total on the KNN graph. Another matchup that probably would have been better about four years ago or so, we got Troy and Georgia Southern. Troy played South Carolina close, couldn't pull it out, and Georgia Southern's just been uninspiring this year, to say the least. Number 100 versus 87. Five-and-a-half point favorite Troy. 50 is the total. Unanimous Georgia Southern lean on the spread. Five of six on the money line if you want to play them at 175. And split on over under. Okay, a team on the rise against a team in a tailspin. We got Southern Al uh, South Alabama and Texas State. Texas State's just been awful this year. Number 101 versus 124. Four-point favorite for Southern or USA. 52.5 is the total, unanimous Southern, uh, South, I keep saying Southern, South Alabama lean on the spread and money line if you want to play them at minus 185. Split on over and under. About a three and four chance South Alabama wins according to the KNN chart by an average of 6.7 and the total is 55.6. All right, I remember when this matchup used to be like week two every year in the Mountain West. It's not this year, but it's still pretty early. Wyoming and Air Force. Wyoming's a six-point favorite, number 86 versus number 40. Total's 46.5. Unanimous Air Force lean on the spread and money line if you want to play them at 227. Unanimous over as well. About a 10% chance for Wyoming to win, so not very confident in their chances here. Average uh, margin is 13.2, and the total is 52.6. All right. Maybe one of the better one of four teams in the country against one of the uh, against a two and two team that's not really that good. We got Georgia State and Louisiana Monroe, ninety one versus Wine nineteen. Georgia State still that tough loss to Auburn. Man, they had them beaten, snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. But they're favored by sixteen here in the total is fifty one. However, unanimous UL Monroe lean on the spread, split on the money line, and uh, five of six going over, including the three keys. About a six out of seven or a six out of seven chance that Georgia State wins this one. Average margin is fourteen point four, and the total is fifty point seven. All right, two teams looking to turn their seasons around. We got Utah and USC, number thirty nine versus sixty six. Utah's a three point dog at the Coliseum. The total is fifty two point five. Five of the six metrics do like Utah to cover. All of them like them at plus 140 on the money line. And five of six like this game going over, including all three keys. 43.3% chance for Utah, which sounds about right. Average margin is Utah by 1.4. And the total is uh, 62.4, nearly uh, 10 points over the posted total on the KNN graph. All right, two teams that have been very disappointing this year after. Um, and that's Memphis and Tulsa. Memphis, two losses in a row, including a really bad one to Temple. And then Tulsa, just blowouts and losses at FCS schools abound. Number 77 versus 88. Tulsa's a three-point favorite at home. The total is 61. However, all six metrics do like Memphis here. All six me metrics like Memphis at plus 145. And five of six, including the three keys, like this going under 61. 56.7% win chance for Memphis on the KNN graph. But the margin is even, and the total is 57.6, so slightly under. All right, can you, if UCLA wants to turn their season around, they got to do it against a really bad Arizona team that's 0 and 4 and might not win a game this year. Number 24 versus 102. UCLA only a 16 point favorite, the total is 61. We are split on the spread, split on the money line. Five of six like this going over, however, the keys are split. 
about a three and four chance for UCLA to win. So that seems kind of low to me. Their average margin is 10 and the total is 70.6. So it looks like an overplay. And then finally, a body bag non-conference game that should not be competitive. We got New Mexico State and Nevada, number 54 versus 128. Nevada's favored by 31 and the total is 62.5. We're split on the spread and uh, unanimous over 62.5. 100% win chance for Nevada over here by an average of 28.9 and the total is 71.3. So another over lean, it looks like. And now let's start getting into the ranked matchups on Saturday, going in order of the time they will be played. So that means we are going to start off with the Red River Shootout, Oklahoma and Texas. Oklahoma's favored by three. This is number nine versus 12. Oklahoma's offense just has been pretty inconsistent this year. And I, you know, I watched Texas last week, obviously, against TCU, and I saw some flaws in their defense. Um, so maybe Oklahoma can get it going here. But we're split on the spread. Uh, money line, if you want to play Texas at plus 140, it's there. And we are split on over and under. So it looks like the total is pretty sharp. 70% win chance for Oklahoma, according to the KNN graph, by an average of 6.7, and the total is 61.8. So probably an Oklahoma lean, if anything. However, the most similar matchup did have the team similar to Texas winning by uh, 18 to by 18. So keep that in mind. Neutral site game. Moving on to what should be a blowout. Maybe one of the worst four and one teams in the country. We got Maryland and Ohio State. Ohio State's only a twenty-one point favorite. I, my model thinks it should be a little bit more. Number four over sixty-nine, and uh, split on over and under. However, the three keys all like the under seventy-one here. Still gives Maryland a ten percent chance to, for the K and N graph. Twenty-one point nine is your uh, spread, so that's pretty sharp. And seventy-eight point eight, so the over on the, according to K and N. I don't know how this team has gotten up all the way to number 11. I don't think they're that good. I don't. They're still number, they're ranked number 11 in the AP poll, and I still am at 51 in my model. I just don't think they're that good. But they're on the road at Rutgers, number 63. Michigan State's a six-point favorite. Uh, un almost a unanimous Rutgers lean on the spread and at plus 191 on the money line. Five of six on under, but uh, we're split on the keys. Yeah, my model's not a believer in Michigan State. I really don't think they're that good. Um, about a 53.3% chance to win. Average margin is 1.9, and the total is 47.6. All right, two upstart teams that um, a second loss would really kill a lot of their buzz. Arkansas and Ole Miss, number 13 versus 32. Ole Miss, 5.5-point favorite at home, and the total is 66.5. 5 of 6 do like Mississippi State to cover. 5 of 6 like Miss Ole, or Ole Miss at minus 222, and unanimous under 66.5, about a 4 in 10 chance for Arkansas, average margins 4.3, and the total is 60.4 on the KNN chart. All right, blowout city, although after Florida lost to Kentucky last week, you have to wonder how, if they get up for this one. Number 5 versus 120, so despite the loss of Kentucky, they're still number 5. Um, they're favored by 38, the total is 59.5. 5 of the 6 like Vanderbilt to cover. Money line's too big to matter, and we are split on over and under. 0% chance for Vanderbilt to win on the k &N graph. Did any team get close? No, it looks like the closest was a 12-point margin in Nebraska and Penn State in 2017. Average margin 36.7 over here and 58.8 is total, so not a lot of value according to k &N. All right, this matchup is so weird being played in October. I'm used to it being played in mid-November, but it's being played in uh, early October this year for some reason. We got Georgia and Auburn. Auburn with a big win against LSU last week, but I still don't think they're good enough to beat Georgia. I mean, Georgia's a 15.5-point favorite on the road. Number two versus 30. And my model loves Georgia here. I mean, a unanimous Georgia, Georgia over here, over 47. I don't see it. I don't think Auburn's that good. I really don't. I mean, Georgia State had them beat, guys. Georgia State had them beat. Unanimous, not one uh, KNN matchup gives Auburn the edge. Although there's a couple one-point margin right here and a three-point margin right here. But 
Average margin over here is 25.8, 59.6. This is going to turn out like the Georgia-Arkansas game last week, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, interesting non-conference matchup that we see every year, Boise State and BYU. Number 19 versus 37, but Boise State's 2-3, and three, so they're really not that good. So BYU should be fine here. They're favored by only 5.5, though, and the total is 57. But my model thinks this is disrespecting BYU. Unanimous spread lean for them. Near unanimous money line at minus 238. And uh, five of the six like this going over. The KN ch chart only gives um, Boise State a 6.7% chance of winning. And the average margin is 16.4 and 53.9. So I don't get this line at all. All right, upstart Wake Forest going on the road to the bad Syracuse team, number 46 versus 89. So another one of those teams that my model doesn't really respect that the polls do. Wake's a six-point favorite in the Carrier Dome, and the total is 57. <laughs> unanimous Wake Forest lean on the spread and money line if you want to play them at 227, and unanimous under as well. About a three and four chance Wake Forest wins. I think it should be higher by an average of 7.2, and the total is 56.4. All right. SMU has not won in Annapolis in a long time, and I really don't think SMU is that good. They're ranked, but they're really not that good. I mean, I have them at 55 in my model. Navy's 112, though, so SMU should be fine here, but you never know with the triple option. Navy did beat UCF. Uh, but split on the spread, split on the money line, and split on over and under according to the keys, so not a lot of value here. About a nearly two-thirds chance SMU wins by an average of 4.8, so according to KN, there's value on Navy, and total 54.3, so not a lot of value on the total. All right, matchup of the week. Matchup of the week coming up at Kinnick Stadium. We got Penn State going to Iowa City to play Iowa. Iowa's a one and a half point favorite. This is number 10. So Iowa's finally catching up in the, my rankings against number 14. Total's only 41, so it should be a defensive battle. We are split on the spread three and three. We are split on money line. However, unanimous over 41, so my model thinks there will be some points scored, and not at least enough to, for it to go over. 56.7% chance for Penn State on the KNN graph. And uh, average margin is 5.5, so the KNN really likes Penn State. Okay. A weird matchup. Can Michigan keep it going? I think they will. This is number three at number 42. Only a three and a half point favorite, and the total is 50.5. So if I was a Michigan fan, I would think this is disrespect being thrown my way, but five of the six do like them to cover that. If you want to play them at minus 172, which I think is great value, uh, go ahead. Five of six like it there. We are split on over and under, though. Only a 56.7% chance for Michigan to win, according to KN, and the top two did favor Nebraska over here. Average margin is only four, so the KNN thinks that this is a pretty sharp line. 51.6, so yeah, according to KNN, the line is right, but according to everything else, it's not. All right, two teams that really can't afford a loss. We got Notre Dame and Virginia Tech, so Notre Dame needs to keep winning mainly for Cincinnati's sake. And Virginia Tech, you know, this is a non-conference game, but still, can't lose two in a row. Number 21 versus 23, so this is an even matchup. Virginia Tech's favored by one, and the total is 47. Unanimous Notre Dame on the spread. Almost unanimous on money line at minus 115, and split on over-under. However, the four or the three keys do like it going under. About a 40% chance for Notre Dame to win over here. The margin is zero, and 50.7 on the total, so a slight over-lean according to the KN chart. All right, one team coming off a disappointing loss and rumors of a coaching change against a team, upstart team that beat Florida and is feeling good about themselves, LSU and Kentucky. Number 15 versus 62. So Kentucky is number six, 16, and I have them at 62 in my model. So another disconnect. I don't think Kentucky's that good. I don't. However, um, Kentucky's a three and a half point favorite here, and the total is 50. Unanimous LSU lean on the spread and money line at plus 145. Unanimous under uh, 50. 63.3% win chance for LSU over here. Average margin is 6, and the total is 47.8. So under play and probably LSU. 
This is a really hard ticket to get maybe a month ago, but not so much anymore. Alabama going to College Station to play A&M. A&M just not looking very good, guys. I know they're going to blame their quarterback situation all they want, but remember, we watched A&M and Kent State uh, week one on the stream, and I was not impressed with Haynes King for A&M that game, so I don't think it really would have mattered. Maybe it would have mattered against uh, Arkansas or Mississippi State, but A&M's not that good, guys. Alabama's fair by 17.5, and the total's 51. Number one, verse 26. Unanimous Alabama lean on the spread. If you want to play minus 909 on Moneyline, go ahead and unanimous over 51. 100% for Alabama. It looks like the closest game was three in this chart. Minnesota and Fresno State in 2019. I remember that game when Fresno State was missing passes into the end zone in overtime in that one. Average margin is 24.5 and 61 is your total. So it looks like an overplay is in that line here. All right, moving on to the, this should, this is the last matchup. All right, moving, this is the last one of the video. New Mexico and San Diego State, number 123 for 56. So another ranked team that my model does not think is very good. 19.5 favorite, total is 42. We are split on the spread. Um, money line is probably too big to play. And five, we are split on over and under, at least the keys are. Good defensive team, San Diego State is, but they're a bad offensive team, but only one K nearest neighbors matchup favors New Mexico here, and that was Boston College over NC State in 2016. Otherwise, it's a 20.7 average margin, 39.6 is the total. So it should be low scoring. Awesome. And when we look at what my plays are this week, only two on the spread, Georgia against Auburn and North Texas against Missouri. Uh, we got five overs, West Virginia, Baylor, Georgia, Auburn, Penn State, Iowa, UTEP, Southern Miss, and Alabama A&M. And then four unders in Ole Miss, Arkansas, Ohio, Central Michigan, Eastern Michigan, and Miami of Ohio, and Western Kentucky, UT San Antonio. And then a lot of money lines. Hopefully uh, the dogs hit this week and we can hit on all the favorites. Not a lot of big dogs this week, though. Only, I only see one. So we got Florida International plus 150, Ole Miss minus 222, Rutgers plus 191, Wake Forest minus 227, Iowa minus 125, North Texas is the shot of the week at plus 660, Georgia Southern plus 175, Buffalo plus 175, Air Force minus 227, Southern Miss plus 115, South Alabama minus 185, UT San Antonio plus 145, Michigan minus 172, LSU plus 145, Utah plus 140, and Memphis plus 145 are my plays this week. I'm feeling a lot better about the money line picks this week than I was last week. So hopefully the money line, I mean, can get it going. But that is this week. All right. Um, anything else I can talk about in the stream? Make sure everything looks good. Everything looks good on my end, but um, someone was saying something about the DPPA and the uh, power rankings earlier. I still have a few minutes. DPPA, uh, Coastal Carolina. Okay, number 63. Sounds about right. I mean, that just means they're not a very good uh, defense. And then said something about Cal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the number. That's right, yeah. So we dealt with this... Um, the number itself, yeah. So uh, it's because of how SQL processes. I fixed it. Um, I'll fix it off stream, but it's just the way SQL processes errors. And when I say error, I mean like E minus O4, uh, the numerical scientific notation. Um, it's how that's proce processed. I have Penn State going 8 and 3. So who do I have them losing to? Iowa, Ohio State, and Michigan. Sounds about right. I have Michigan going unbeaten. I mean, if they can get over that Penn State road game, I think they have a really good chance to get undefeated. That'll be a tough one. Uh, still thinking about the Discord. Still thinking about it. All right, well, um, all right. I said I'd be off by 7.45, so I think I'm going to call it a, a night. I will stream on Saturday. So TCU has a night game on Saturday, so I'll probably stream the day games on Saturday. Yep, that's how it'll be. Just looking at the schedule here. Yeah, so I'll be able to do the Red River. I'll do Arkansas, Ole Miss, Georgia, Auburn, Penn State, Iowa. 
Um, but once the TCU game starts, uh, I'll probably sign off. So we probably won't see the end of that Iowa Penn State game on the stream Saturday. But apart from that, feel free to join. All right, guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm going to. Uh, I need to put some ice or some on my neck and then a heating pad. Like I'm like a bird. I can't move my neck at all. All right, guys. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I will see you on Saturday.